Okay, what's going on everybody? Got all my steel. Ready to start working on this thing again. Yeah, the bed's back on it. I'm going to leave the bed on it so I can uh, put my rear bar in and get the trailer hitch where it needs to be. And then, I'm not going to tack anything in there, but I'm going to just get some measurements and figure out where everything needs to go for the height hitch. So we'll get that going, get that set up. Got the C-notch stuff, or the tubing for the C-notch. That's what I'm going to be using. I'm just going to cut it in half, and then half is going to go on both sides because I don't need a crazy C-notch in there. I just need a little bit more extra room for when I lower it. Because uh, when I, uh, the way they have you lower it, um, they give you two adjustments for the the rear shackles, and I have it on the highest setting. So this time I'm going to put it on the lowest setting, and when it's on the lowest setting, it, uh, it's pretty darn close to the chassis and if you hit a hit a bump a pretty good bump it'll it'll slap the the axle will slap the chassis and that's not good it'll it'll start either you know cracking the frame or beating the crap out of the the housing of the rear end so i'll see notch that put a bump stop in there and that'll that'll take care of that and then this plate is just to box in the rear that little section but i can show you that more when we get going on that and then this is the trailer hitch off of my dad's truck so i'll chop that up and use off of it what i need honestly the only thing i'm gonna think i'm gonna have to chop off is the top here so i'm gonna get rid of this bracket and get rid of that bracket i can show you guys that after i'm done cutting that up and then that's the axle that's the uh shock tube not axle tube that's the shock tube i'm gonna be using inch and three eighths and then that's for the back bar so we'll get cracking see how this goes okay so here's where i got after some uh some quick measurements the uh trailer hitch bracket is going to end up being about if you can see that it'll, probably, it'll be probably about right there It'll be more towards the top, but it'll be <clears throat> not not really flush with the rope end, but it'll be sticking out a little bit behind the plate. So it'll be probably about right there. But uh for for my for my quick measurements I got. So I held it up there and then I uh, measured off the back bracket of that trailer hitch. I came out with uh two and a half inches. So that uh, trailer hitch needs to be two and a half inches away, or the back of that bracket needs to be two and a half inches away from this cross member. So in that cross member bracket's a quarter inch thick, so I just added that quarter inch on my two and a half inches. And then I added two inches to that, so that'd be four and three quarters of an inch. So that's going to be the front of that cross member. So then I added another two inches on top of that. That'll be the back of that bar. So that's where that'll end up. And then, or it'll be yeah, right right there. Yeah, right there. Six and three quarters of an inch. So uh, it'll be about right there. So, and I add another quarter inch on that for clearance because I'm going to have to trim this bracket off. So I got that measurement already. I went off the back of the, the bed for those. I just went back, or I went, Added a quarter inch on there, and then put it on there, or put my mark on there, and then measured from the back of my bed to that mark, and then I just transferred that mark onto that side as well. So then I'm just going to cut these, cut these up and over, and that should be plenty of clearance from a bar, because like I said, my bar is going to end up being like a quarter inch further forward of this line. So and it's not going to go up to the top either, so it'll probably be down a quarter inch from the top of the chassis because I'll make it closer to the bottom than it is at the top. But yeah, that's what I got so far. So now I get to start, take the bed off and start cutting and fitting stuff up and then I'll tack everything in, cut all my brackets and then see, pop the bed back on and see if she all fits. So I started making my uh, my templates, the box, the rear end, 
I just did a quick measurement to cut out my paper so that way I'm not wasting a ton of paper. But yeah, so <clears throat> I cut these out. And uh cut each one I cut one out. Sorry about that. Cut cut one out. And then I made sure this one matched all four of them, which it does. And then I since I'm MIG welding it, I did leave like a little bit of gap in between. And then I'm also gonna, you know, chamfer this and chamfer the piece as well. So then that way that MIG weld sinks down in there real nice. But yeah, that's that's the template for the sides. So we'll get going on that and then cut those pieces out. So, which I got that 12 inch by 12 inch piece of metal. So I'm gonna have to be real particular about how I cut this out, try to save as much metal as I possibly can. So we'll line these up and cut these out and start getting boxing. I'm also capping the back. So I'll have to cut those out as well. So. I should be able to use or have some of that left over, but well, we'll see. All right, so here's where I'm at with these brackets. I just uh, got done cutting them out and trimming the rest of these off with uh, the cutoff wheel. It was a mix between the cutoff wheel and the sawzall to get them cut out of my plate steel. So I got them rough cut and then I got them in the vise and I'm going over them with the flapper wheel to get them all nice and real smooth and get rid of these, these hard edges. So that's what I'm up to now. So we can get that done. And then we're going to go over to the chassis. Get all those cleaned out. Start beveling everything. And then crank up the welder and start tacking some stuff in. Okay, so I got everything all beveled and ready to go. We're pretty much ready to tack. Got it all in there. It's nice and flush. Nice and flush in all areas. I made sure it was flush with the edge of the chassis. Which it is. Even if it's not, it's not a big deal because I can always grind it down a little bit when I put the my back plate on. So we'll start tacking her and away we go. Get these four tacked in there. I'll probably just leave them tacked for now. Uh, get the back plates made, tack those on. Get my back par, tack that in. Actually, I might weld these back plates in and then tack that in. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. We see how I feel after I have these tacked in and go from there.
Okay, so I just watched that section of video. Well, that was my magnet. <laughs> I just watched that sex of, section of video, and camera angles, absolutely terrible. <laughs> I'll have to work on that. But uh, what I was doing over here, I mean, because it, it ended up being like, I don't know, six or seven minutes long, but I decided to just edit it out. What I was doing over here is I was going to kind of show you guys how I was putting the plate in. I put the plate in, uh, made sure it was square on the back, and then I put my magnets on there to hold the plate in. So I'd put my magnet on there like that, put that one on, and then I put this one on there like that so they would they would hold that piece. And while they're holding that piece, I'm adjusting it, making sure it's flush, using my hand to make sure they're going... They're staying flush, like the whole time I'm tacking them and all that stuff. So that's what uh, I was trying to show you guys what I was doing, but you know, me and my awesome newbie skills for a cameraman. But that's that's the gist of what I was doing. But I won't let you guys sit through that. All right, on to the next. All right, so I got all four of them tacked in. tacked in pretty nice. I'm not worried about the gaps on on those. It's a, it's a big welder. <laughs> It'll be able to fill those in. Not worried about that. Or or the rust on the inside of the chassis. I'm gonna, once I'm done, you know, boxing this all in and I'm gonna end up, you know, just coming back in there and then just spraying it real heavy with, you know, some uh, rust uh, proofing and all that kind of crap and you know the inside of the chassis is going to rust pretty much no matter what I'm going to do to it you know I'm more worried about this bare steel than anything else like I could have used that uh, weld through primer but I mean that's really not going to do much either plus I can do that afterwards because I can get through that little hole and just you know shoot globs of paint in there and call it a day and then I'll do that after it's finished welded because I'm, I plan on welding that cross brace in there too. So then that would just melt off more of that that primer and paint if I were to paint it now. But yeah, that's just them all tacked in. So I'm gonna make these back plates, get those tacked in as well. And after those plates are tacked in and I'll start welding. Already looks way better with those tacked in there. Way better. All right, she's fully boxed or tacked up and ready to be finished welded. Yeah. Plates, I made them just like I made made these. Just made a quick paper template. Actually, I, I measured it you know, across and down. Made a quick paper template, slapped it on there. Slapped the paper template on there. Trimmed it out what needed to be trimmed out. Put them on the metal pieces and then just cut them out with the Sawzall and now we're here. These these kind of plates are super easy to make. And these ones aren't terrible to make, but they just take a little bit more work because of the the, ar the arches and whatnot. If I was making uh making brackets, like if I when I make my shock tube, I have to make brackets because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to save that and use it or if I have to make all new brackets to go off that tube. That tube? If I have to make all brackets new brackets for that tube. I'll put them all together, uh, tack them all together, and then make sure they're all symmetrical, and then that way they're all nice and pretty. And then you just cut the take or the tack welds after that, and then open them up, and you have all symmetrical brackets. But with stuff like this, when you're just filling stuff in, I don't, I don't go that crazy with it, especially if I'm big welding it in, because it'll it'll get gappy because you know, the sides aren't always the same. And plus it's MIG welding, so those gaps are kind of good for it anyways. Get that weld nice down deep in there. So we'll get this welded up and then I'll start grinding and see how it goes from there. All right, there she is, fully welded. Fully welded and ground. So just got done. I only had a couple little spots where I had uh, Ferocity, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, I haven't done 
done any sort of fabrication or real welding in, I don't know, probably three, four years, something like that. It's the last time I worked at that street rod shop. But yeah, that's that's more or less it for for the back end of this thing as far as boxing. I'm going to put that tube in there now. But I got it all, all ground down and beveled on both sides. I got my center line on it. And I'm working on getting all that extra crap off the trailer hitch that I don't need. And then get that in there. But uh, that'll probably be uh, next week's video. I'll probably keep, keep hammering on this tonight. It's already 1 a.m. So I'll work on a little bit longer and then I'm going to go home. But, uh, you know, keep getting this done. Making pretty good progress, I would think. Especially for the amount of work and grinding and all that kind of stuff I'm doing to this thing. Till next time, guys. See you later.